you need to you put in your username, your password, and then you need to confirm it with a two-factor authentication in another way. The worst one is confirming it with an email, because if I've got your username and password, I probably have access to your email. The next best level is via a text message. I don't love that because it's very easy to get that text message. I'm, I'm able to do something called a SIM swap. I'm able to get your number, transfer it to me, and I can get your text messages. It costs a couple of hundred bucks and you can easily do it. So I don't like that. The one I would recommend is at the very least is use something called Google Authenticator or another authenticator app. Authy is a good one. And essentially what that means is on your phone, you have an app that constantly changes numbers every like 60 seconds. So when you log in, you have to put in your username and password, and it will ask you to put in the random six digit number that's currently rotating on your phone. And if they match up, then they let you in. That should be the bare minimum that everybody has. Super complicated password, words that are not found in a dictionary, and that is uppercase, lowercase, all that good stuff, and then an authenticator app. Now, if you want to take it another level, we have these things called a hardware key. Let's just focus on that. Those are important because what that means is that it's something that you physically, physically have. So you put in username and password, and you've got to physically plug this into your USB port on your phone or on your computer, or it's, if it's NFC, you can simply tap the back of your phone with this. And unless we have that physical key, we're not going to be able to get in. 